For the truss shown below, cross-sectional areas of bottom cord members are 600 mm square, while for all other members, 750 mm square. Use modulus of elasticity of 200 gigapascals for all members. By Casigliano's second theorem, determine the vertical deflection at joint B, the relative deflection between C and F. So here is the given figure. So first, let's call this force because there's already a force here, which is downward. Supposedly, we're going to have to apply uh, an upward force, assuming that the deflection at B is upward. But because there is already 60 kilonewtons, we can make this the the P. And our assumption is downward positive. If the result is positive, then that means the vertical deflection at B is really downward, which is expected to be downward, of course. So summation moment, summation forces X equals zero, so that's 50 kilonewtons. Then summation moment about D equals zero. Remember, this is statics. So AY times nine, then plus 50 times 4 minus P times 6 minus 80 times 3. So AY in terms of P and the uh, reactions, value of the reaction is 2 thirds of P plus 40 over 9. Take note that P is equal to 60. Then we have to verify that RD is equal to 1 third of P plus 680 over 9. So that's your job as a student or as a maybe you're a professor also. So this is statics anymore and it is a requirement that you should know how to compute the reactions because that is statics. This is structural theory. So it's not a problem supposedly anymore. So we begin at joint A, summation forces Y to solve for the force in member AF in terms of P and the constant. And the result is negative 5P over 6 minus 50 over 9. You have to verify that by static, summation forces Y. Then summation forces X0, SAB plus negative 5P over 6 minus 50 over 9 times 3 over 5, the slope of this Inclined member is 3 horizontal, 4 vertical, so 5 hypotenuse. Then minus 50 equals 0, you'll get 0.5p plus 160 over 3. Then you proceed to joint F, summation forces X, you'll get EF negative 0.5p minus 160 over 3, summation forces Y equals 0, then you'll get 2 thirds P plus 40 over 9. So as I said, the details of this calculation should be verified by you because you're expected to know how to compute these forces because this is theory, structural theory subject. This is no longer statics. If you still find that difficult for you, then you are astray in this course. You should know that. So it's your problem is static. So you go back to statics if if you cannot obtain these values. Then you proceed to joint B. Summation forces Y equals zero to solve for this force five B over twelve minus fifty over nine. Then summation forces X at joint B. So we have B over four plus one seventy over three for S B C. And summation forces X obviously SBC is equal to SCD, so this is also P over 4 plus 170 over 3. SBC equals SCD. Of course, summation forces Y, obviously, that is 80. Then, lastly, at joint D, summation forces Y equals 0, you'll get SDE negative 5P over 12 minus 850 over 9. And you check summation forces X if it is 0. Then the last joint is E, so you check summation forces X0, summation forces Y, if it is 0. You have to verify if summation forces X at joint D is really 0, 
So, then you proceed to join the summation forces x if it is 0, summation forces y if it is also 0. That's the guarantee that all these forces are correct. Now, I we have color coding here for the bottom members because bottom chord members have areas, cross-sectional areas of 600 mm square and all other members 750 mm square, the orange uh, colored stresses or forces. Then let's tabulate the result. So we have member, the value of S or force in kilonewtons, then partial of S because this is Castigliano's second theorem, uh, partial of S with respect to P, then the length in meters, so the value of S, partial of S with respect to P and length is kilonewton meter. That's why in our calculation for displacement in mm, we multiplied the numerator, this product, by 1,000 square to convert it to newton mm later. Then this is the product of S, partial of S, times length. Then we begin with member AF, uh, AB in alphabetical maybe. Then S is 0.5B plus 160 over 3. Then partial of S with respect to P is 0.5. The length of AB is 3 meters, and the product, take note that P has a value equal to 60.5 times 60 plus 160 over 3, close times 0.5 times 3, it will give us 125. It's blue because these stresses colored with blue have areas of 600 mm square. Next is AF, negative 0.5P over 6 minus 50 over 9. Partial derivative, negative 5 over 6. Then the length is 3, 4, so 5 meters. Then the product with P60 is 231.481. The next member is BC. P over 4 plus 170 over 3. Partial derivative is 1 fourth. Then the length is 3. The product with B60 is 53.75. Next is member BE, 5B over 12 minus 50 over 9. Partial derivative 5 over 12. The length is 5. Then the product with B equal to 60 is 40.509. Next is BF, 2 thirds P plus 40 over 9. Partial derivative with respect to P, two-thirds. The length is 4. And the product with P, 60, 118.519. Then, member CD, P over 4 plus 170 over 3. Partial derivative, one-fourth. Length, 3. Product is 53.75. Then, DE, negative 5P over 12 minus 850 over 9. Then partial derivative, negative 5 over 12. The length is 5. Then the product of S, partial of S with respect to P length is 248.843. Finally, EF, negative 0.5P minus 160 over 3. Partial derivative negative 0.5, length 3, then the product is 1 to 5. So adding the colored blue, common factor should be the factor to convert to Newton mm is 1000 square and E, which is 200,000 megapascals. So what is left is this product over area. So delta B vertical is equal to 1,000 square over 200,000. This is E, 200,000. Then 232, you add all these blue colored entries. The area is 600 for bottom cords, the blue ones. Then for these orange colored entries, the sum is 764.352. The cross-sectional area is 750. 1,000 square is thus the conversion factor to convert the result to mm. Then 200,000 is 200,000 megapascals, that is E. From S, partial of S with respect to P, length 
divided by area E. The areas are this. So the vertical deflection at B is 7.033 mm downward. Then for the second question, the relative deflection between C and F, that is we apply P because this is Castigliano's second theorem directed towards C and P towards F as shown. So the slope of this line is 3 horizontal, 4 vertical, 5 hypotenuse. So we expect in this assumption because the forces applied are inward, meaning to say we assume that C and F will approach each other. Supposedly, if I were to assign this because it's already presented here, it should be a way so that whatever is the result, if it is positive, it's correct. But if it is negative, then it's true that the joint C and F will come closer to each other. If the result is positive in this assumption, if the result is negative, it means that C and F will move away from the original position as shown. So since P and P are already in equilibrium, they cannot affect the values of the reactions. So summation forces X, this is still 50 because the X component of this opposes the X component of this P here. So it will just cancel. Or in other words, these two forces are in equilibrium. So they cannot affect the reactions. So since P is 60, two thirds of 60 plus 40 over nine, that should be the result here. The P, which was 60 kilonewtons, not the P here, because these P's are just invented. So 400 over 9, then remember that P here is this P here, which is 60. 60 over 3 is 20 plus 680 over 9. So the reaction here is 860 over 9. So these members are not functions of P, definitely. Only members attached to F and C or maybe BE will be a function of P. And those are the members that should be tabulated later. So by statics, you proceed at joint A summation forces Y equals zero. Remember the slope, three horizontal, four vertical, five hypotenuse. You'll get negative 500 over nine there. Then stress in AB is 250 over three. Then you proceed to joint F, summation forces X. Definitely this is a function of P because there is P there. The horizontal component of P is to the right, three fifths of P. So that's why this is negative 250 over three minus 0.6 P. Summation forces Y, you'll get the force of this in terms of P also. Uh, 400 over nine minus 0.8 P. Then you proceed to joint B, summation forces Y, you'll get 175 over 9 plus P. So if you want to verify these values, you have to pause the video and check if this is really 175 over 9 plus P. Then summation forces X, this member BC is 215 over T minus 0.6 P. You have to pause again the video, then verify that that's the value. Then you, we proceed to joint C, summation forces Y. You'll get the force of member C, F, C, rather, 80 minus 0.8 P. Then summation forces X, you'll get 215 over 3 here. Or you may proceed to joint D, summation forces Y. You can solve DE, negative 1075 over 9. Then summation forces X, you will get 215 over 3 to check. Then you check joint E, summation forces X. If it is zero, then all these calculations, values of stresses will be correct. Then summation forces Y, if it is also zero, then that uh, guarantees that all these values are correct. So let's, have, let's continue this and tabulate on the next slide. So this was the results in the preceding slides. Let's now tabulate the results. So we only consider 
members that are functions of p because the partial derivative of those members that have constant stresses or forces will be zero. So only this mem only these members one, two, three, four, five five members to be included. And there's only one blue colored entry. The length in meters, then the product S partial of S with respect to P times length in kilonewton meter. So we begin with member BC, this one. So 215 minus 0.6P, and partial derivative negative 0.6. Take note that this time the length is 3. Take note that this time P is invented, so this is 0. So you'll get the product 215 over 3 times negative 0.6 times 3 only. So we do not include this because P is 0 this time. They are just invented. So the product is negative 129. For member BE, BE, this is this. So 175 over 9 plus P. Partial derivative is 1. Then the length is 5. So, 175 over 9 times 5, you'll get 875 over 9. Then, member BF, this member here, 400 over 9 minus 0.8p, partial derivative negative 0.8. Then, the length is 4. So, the product, ignore this, 400 over 9 times negative 0.8 times 4 is negative 1 to 80 over 9. Then, member CE, this one, 80 minus 0.8 P, the partial derivative with respect to P is negative 0.8. The length is 4, and the product 80 times negative 0.8 times 4 is negative 256. And finally, member EF, negative 250 over 3 minus 0.6 P, the partial derivative is negative 0.6, then the length is 3, the product is negative 250 over 3 times negative 0.6 times 3, so it is positive 150. So delta C slash F, relative displacement between C and F is 1,000 square over 200,000 times quantity negative 129 over 600 plus the sum of these orange colored entries negative 151, the area is 750. So in mm, it's negative, negative 2.082 mm. Since it is negative and it opposes our assumption, that means that the relative displacement is away. So C and F will be uh, farther away than their original positions. So the answer would be in that manner, 2.082 mm and away. So you have to indicate it. If the result were positive, then the arrow should be pointing each other. Because the result is negative, they are pointing away from each other. So meaning to say this assumption that they are closer to each other is wrong. So that's it for this problem.